So going back to um, sort of the doctrines of uh, contact in the desert. <laughs> yeah. I, I'm curious about that. I'm curious what you see as being sort of the, uh, the, uh, the call to action that I know that I'm sure there's a lot of different ideas floating around out there, but generally speaking from, from your perception, what do you, what is, what do you think they're, what are they saying we need to do generally yeah. speaking? That's, that's a great question. This keep, that's, this kept coming up. What they're constantly saying is disclosure is up to us. The aliens, you know, this is the narr- this is the new narrative. The old narrative was that the na- that the governments of the world are in collusion with the aliens and that they're exchanging humans for technology, and the aliens are getting to mess around with us, do experiments on us, and in exchange, you know, we're getting blessed with all this new technology that we we're talking about that took off in the 20th century. That was the old narrative, and in that narrative, you know, the aliens were trying to make contact with world leaders to you know bring about their emergence that has changed and this is um this is the website contact in the desert.com and you could just click on like the speakers and look at the lineup and stuff like that but this is the page panels and conversations i enjoyed the uh single lectures that i went to they were informative and a lot of interesting stuff but i i got the most out of the panel discussions where they would have you know five six seven eight people uh, on stage at the same time and fielding questions with the audience and discussing things among themselves. And just to give you an idea of the panel discussions, you had UFOs, crop circles, and grids around the world. Uh, this was the first one. Very interesting stuff there. Forbidden archaeology, talking about you know who's been here before and what did they leave behind for us to check out. Uh, and each one kind of gets progressively a little bit deeper into what is the agenda? What is the call to action? Okay, so we're... There's, they, I don't know if they did this intentionally. Probably it looks like it, but just kind of setting the stage. Let's whet your at, your appetite, right? You kind of go, okay, cool, crop circles, yeah, and just and forbidden archaeology. Okay, science of UFOs, technology, and the quantum field. And this is where we start getting into some real kind of esoteric quantum, you know, mm-hmm. kind of weirdness there. Ancient aliens. This was the panel they had, like the George Nori and the Eric von Daniken. You know, I'll give you an idea of the, the people. People go to the, you can go to this website yourself and check it out. But you know, some of you may recognize the names, Graham Hancock and stuff like that here. So, you know, this is where they're really making a case that, you know, ancient aliens have been here. They're probably our fathers, you know, they're our parents, you know, and they're they're coming back to uh, you know, visit their children and make us aware of our origins and all that kind of stuff. Okay, get a little deeper. Okay, the secret space program and disclosure panel. Now, this is where you start talking about where are we with disclosure and that's where they were talking about big d and little d little d disclosure just happened this right before this conference started big d is on the way but they the aliens are no longer concerned with talking to world leaders because world leaders all have agendas yeah you know whether you're talking religious you know that they want to skew everything in a certain religious direction or whether you're talking geopolitical i mean and one of the things that came up in i forget which panel it was i think it was in the last one uh, UFO spiritual evolution and consciousness panel. They asked the question. Oh, l- let me just kind of work my way to that. I want to jump ahead. <clears throat> I'll come back to about the question. But so they're talking about wh- who knows what and you know what's already on the table. Contact experience. This were people who uh, have had multiple contact experiences, like Travis Walton, Whitley Stryber, other people here. Uh, I think it was Mary Rodwell. I think was the one that was talking about children with autism and stuff claiming to have regular visitations by these beings that they, for whatever reason, uh, seem to be attracted to these type of kids. And these kids have a pretty solid interaction with them. I missed this one, so I don't know what the Wilcock panel was, but okay, in this one, everything shifts to spirituality and the evolution of consciousness. Mm -hmm. All the action is we need to increase our level of consciousness to get to the spiritual level that we can handle emergence with these people. And they're no longer going to go to world leaders. And so they're asking, you know, that one of the questions that was asked of the panel uh, by the host was, okay, if you could pick any one person on earth, okay, if, if they, if, if our alien brothers and sisters and parents really want to make contact with us, who do we elect to be the representative spokesperson for earth? And I would say unanimously, the question was the children. 
And this is where everything's going. Everything is targeting children. Now, you look at that, and at first you're like, well, what? Well, it makes perfect sense if you think about it. Do you really want a Republican representing us? Do you really want a Democrat representing us? Do you really want, you know, a Buddhist, a Christian, a Muslim? You know, you know if, and if you're talking about, you know, which faction are you talking about? You know, which of the 40,000 denominations of Christianity are you going to pick? You know, do you want Benny Hinn representing us? Who do you want? Pat Robertson? Um, any way you go within the realm of religion or government, you're always going to have certain agendas and biases that are going to be want to be pushed by that individual. And the aliens are sick of it, according to what they're saying. They're, they're, they're sick of all this stuff, the politics and the agendas and, you know, all that. And the thinking is a child it has not yet been programmed by the media, uh, which uh, I would debate that because the cartoons and everything are our programming our kids. But mm -hmm. what they're saying is they don't have as much of the filters to go through as an, any adult from whatever persuasion, religious, political, or otherwise that you may have, is a child is going to represent the innocence of mankind. And so from that perspective, I'm going, yeah, you know, I, I get it. I, I see what they're saying. You know, a child, you know, will, will speak his mind, you know, uh, and they're looking for the innocence. And this brings me to an interesting point that uh, I've come to agree with uh, Zach Bauer on. I had in my research going through the Torah, because I, I realized very early in my Torah walk that Revelation is just an amped up repeat of Exodus. You take the plagues of Exodus and compare them to the plague, plagues you know, of Revelation, put them side by side. And I did that, put a spreadsheet in my Exodus workbook, Revelation and, and Exodus plagues. It's a direct correlation. Revelation is just an amped up repeat of Exodus. What has been will be again. Mm -hmm. Okay. So when we were going through the Torah and got into the book of Numbers, and it's talking about, uh, I think it was 1,000 uh, men of fighting age were selected from each of the 12 tribes. So you had 12,000 effectively sentry guards that were, uh, in the, I forget what chapter it is in the book of Numbers, but it, you know, they did a couple of censuses in the, in the book of Numbers, and I think it was the second one. Anyway, they got 1,000 from each of the 12 tribes to be essentially sentry, sentry guards, because here's this, you know, let's say 2 million plus Israelites going through the desert and they're forming a perimeter guard, right? <clears throat> well, that's at that time. In the last days, it's more. You got 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes, 144,000. Mm -hmm. So when I was looking at Revelation being an amped up repeat of Exodus and looking at the Exodus account of the picking of the thousand from each of the 12 tribes, I saw a direct correlation between that and the 12,000 from each of the 12 tribes me making 144,000 in the book of Revelation and made the connection in my mind that these are young people because uh, it says that they, the 144,000 have not, uh, they were virgin, 144,000 male virgins who have not been with women yet. So I'm thinking in today's society, how are you going to get 144,000 virgin males? Right. And I'm thinking they're going to have to be pretty young probably, you know? Uh, so I began to think that they're probably in their, you know, somewhere between between 10 and 20 years of age. Zach, he goes a little bit younger than that. He believes that the 144,000 are, are, are young children. And when I was at this conference and listening to them talk about what their view is with the children and the children making contact with the aliens and being the vessels that the aliens are going to work through, I'm going, well, that just makes sense to me. You have the indigo children, the black eyed children, you know, all these... Um, Star Child. In fact, <clears throat> I'm walking around with this seed T-shirt, right? And one of the uh, attendees goes, "Oh, do you believe you're a star seed?" <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, uh, no, I don't. <laughs> <clears throat> but there's this whole idea of star children. It's all about the children. So now it makes sense to me that you're going to have these perhaps alien, angel, human hybrid children kind of thing on the one side. And that Yahuwah is going to raise up his 144,000 to be the antithesis of that as, as the sentry guards, in my opinion, for the she, the her that escapes into the desert in Revelation chapter 12, that the, you know, 
Satan goes after the remnant of her children. She goes out there and uh, he tries, the, the serpent tries to go out and he sends a great flood and, you know, the whole deal. Revelation chapter 12. <clears throat> There's a big push for the children. And that made me think, okay, on the one hand, you have abortion killing off all our children. Um, and that's consistent with the, you know, anytime you, go, you start looking at the arrival of a significant person like Moses, okay, Pharaoh, kill all the children. Uh, Yeshua, okay, Herod, kill all the children. Okay, something's coming. Let's kill all the children, right? So you have, on, on the one hand, you have the murder of the innocent. And on the other, you have the children as the primary target for indoctrination and for revelation. And so then you have this mass push for vaccination that changes something in the cellular cellular structure and brain function of our children that they become socially unable to interact with us like normal children and yet just so happen to be amped up to interact with this spiritual realm. Mm-hmm. I don't know, but that was the big, that was the, the, I felt that very strongly throughout this conference was the children are a big issue moving forward. Yeah, I can, I can see that. I've got a little differing, differing opinion on the 144,000, but it'll be too much of a rabbit trail for me to go <laughs> over. I'm, I'm working actually on a, on like on a mini, mini documentary on the 144,000. So when that comes out, I'll make sure that I, I send you a message uh, for a link to it. For <laughs> sure. I, I don't know if you've checked it out. You should check out Zach's stuff. I've only talked about it briefly. I've, I've talked about it mostly with, you know, friends and family at Bible studies. I haven't really written or done anything on it, uh, on my take on it. But uh, if you haven't, check out Zach's stuff on it. You know, okay, I will. I like, I like Zach's stuff. The 144,000 has been a hotly contested. You know, oh yeah. Oh for, yeah. <laughs> for a long time. For sure. So, oh yeah. I, I think, uh, w- one of the, one of the big missing puzzle pieces to the 144,000, um, it's a book. I, I think we've, we've mentioned a couple times the, um, uh, while we've been while we've been discussing the uh, the book of Fourth Ezra or Second Ezra, uh, which was one of the apocrypha that was removed, um, anyways, it's it has like another scene of the hundred forty four thousand that we don't see in in Revelation seven or fourteen or uh, or anywhere else. But um, anyways, I'm working on that uh, video. I actually, probably might be a month or two till I get on that. But I'll uh, I'll make sure that I'll send you a link for that when when it comes out. But. Yeah, and also go back and look at the I, – I, again, I don't remember the address, but go back and look. I think it's toward the end of the book of Numbers. When, 31, chapter 31. Is it 31 when they start to mobilize and they – you know they, they pick well, the, the thousand per for, for tribe is uh, 31. 31, okay, yeah. Yeah, yeah you know, whatever happens, I, you know, it is my opinion if, if, in fact, Revelation is an amped up repeat of, of the Exodus account. And, and I, when I say the Exodus account, I'm talking about the entire – time from the leaving of exodus uh, the the exodus from egypt to 40 years later going into the promised land i think we're going to see a big mirror of you know all that we're going to have to pass through the rod in the desert we're going to have to do you know all kinds of stuff um and that's why i believe we've been told to read the torah every year and to go through it you know and and why we are to mikra the various um uh, moedim is because we, we only get good at what you practice. And so, you know, there's going to come a time when the curtains are going to go up and the main event's going to happen and we better know our lines, we better know our position. You know, and I'm preaching to myself right now uh, because just a little while ago, I was thinking to myself, I've gotten a little stagnant in my, uh, my Torah studies. And, um, you know, part of it was like, well, gosh, I've been doing it for nine years now. You know, doing the same thing every year. You know, the first five, six years, it was like, wow, new revelation. Every time I look at it, it was like, oh, my goodness. Uh, now I kind of feel like, yeah, okay, I've been there, done that. You know, you know I, it, I, there's still more revelation, obviously, to be to be found. But, you know, even as I'm speaking right now, I'm preaching to myself like, okay, dude, there's a reason why you're supposed to be, uh, you know, studying this. Yeah, amen. 